Uh, I thought Millsap in the first half was good. In the second half, he struggled. You know, um, didn't like DJ. We almost went with um, Paul Reed. I mean, that's what we went between. I'm sorry. What? So the Philadelphia 76ers are coming off a 118 to 116 loss to the Milwaukee Bucks, in which they had a double digit lead. This is the second consecutive game where they've blown a double digit lead versus very good teams, by the way. They lost to the Bucks, and then this game before that, they lost to the Suns. They held double digit leads in both those games. Why am I saying this? Because I think that the 76ers have a coaching problem, more specifically, a Doc Rivers problem. This is just one of the many things that I realize when watching the 76ers, and I blame most of these things on Doc because these things can be brought down to coaching. Some of the decisions he makes and the things he does could end up costing the Sixers later in the season and potentially going into the playoffs. So today we're going to be talking about how Doc Rivers has been one of the biggest problems with the Sixers during the season and what he can do to be better as hopefully the Sixers can go into the playoffs and pull off a championship run. If they're going to do that, they're going to need Doc Rivers to be at his best as well. So today we're going to be talking about that, so let's get into it. When you consistently have your teams blowing big double-digit leads, whether that's in the playoffs, in the regular season, it's been a theme with the Sixers all season. Me as a Sixers fan, every time the Sixers get a big lead, I'm not, there is no part of me that believes that they're going to hold on to that lead. Even though they were up, I believe it was 13 or 16 points on the Bucks at one point. There was no part of me that 100% believed that the Bucks were not gonna come back. And I didn't say that I thought the Sixers were gonna lose that game, but I knew it would be close in the end. And what ended up happening, the Sixers blew the lead and they lost by two points. That's just one of the problems that I see when watching the Sixers is the blown leads. Another one that I really want to talk about is the rotations, okay? The rotations. I don't, uh, I just don't understand. I really don't understand these rotations sometimes. Like, Doc Rivers, when James Harden was traded to the Sixers, said that he always wanted to have two of Embiid, Harden, Maxi, and Harris out on the floor at the same time. Well, he goes into these lineups where it's one of them on the floor with all bench players and a lot of the time it's one of those guys with other players that can't create that can't dribble around them you just can't do that versus really good teams because they can make a run and come all the way back you can't just have one player out there because teams are going to be able to stop that another thing you have to realize is Joel Embiid can't do everything for this team okay this is the thing during the game versus Milwaukee the Sixers had a 10 point lead in the late third quarter and Joel Embiid checked out of the game. Giannis proceeds to go on like a 17 straight point streak where he scored 17 straight points for the Bucks, led his team all the way back. By the time Embiid checked back in, the Bucks had momentum. Giannis was on fire. The other players around him were rallying and they had cut the lead all the way down and they were right back in the game. This always seems to happen with Sixers teams. Whenever Embiid goes off the floor, the Sixers tend to give up leads. And it's really annoying because Embiid literally, like, he just can't play 48 minutes a game. So you have to be able to control the times when he's not on the floor. It just doesn't seem like the Sixers know how to do that. But I'm going to blame a lot of this on Doc Rivers for one reason, okay? Doc Rivers has the say in the defensive schemes, first of all, and he also has the say in the rotations. Why on earth is Paul Millsap trying to defend Giannis at a critical point in the game. Why is Paul Millsap on the floor? Paul Millsap is a former All-Star, but he is also now, I believe, 35 or 36 years old, trying to guard 6'11", two-time MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Finals MVP, Giannis and Tedekumpo, one-on-one. I don't see how that's fair to the Sixers, to the Sixers fans, to Paul Millsap. I don't see how that's fair to anybody. And then this man comes out in his press conference and says, we almost played Paul Reed, but Paul Reed had a difficult time guarding Giannis in Milwaukee. First of all, uh, Paul Reed didn't play in that game in Milwaukee. That was Paul Millsap. One thing you forgot. Second thing, the other thing you forgot was that it was tough for Paul Reed to guard. He actually, in the game early on this year, when the Sixers were decimated due to the COVID and Paul Reed actually got the start, played Giannis as well as he could have. Paul Reed is at least athletic he hustles he's young and he's a better defender than paul Millsap. and here's the other thing how do teams stop Giannis in the playoffs they build a wall not saying you go full playoff mode but you might as well at least try it out because what if you have to face these guys in the playoffs you might as well try it out now you build a wall 
and you try to stop Giannis from getting downhill, or you send a double team. I don't understand why you can't send a double team at Giannis, just like teams seem to double team and beat every time he touches the ball. I don't get it. Giannis gets it down low, double the man. Doesn't make any sense to me. That's also Doc Rivers. And then the final thing I want to talk about with Doc Rivers is late game execution. This team doesn't look like they know what to do down the stretch. It just looks like they're all trying to ISO. That's honestly what it looks like. If you look at the last couple possessions of the game versus Milwaukee, when the Sixers were down just one point, they end up getting a crappy shot off an Embiid mid-range contested shot, and he misses off the front of the rim. If you look at that whole possession, the minute the ball was inbounded, no one looked like they knew what to do. They kind of just looked disjointed on, on offense. They looked like they were indecisive and it didn't make any sense. Same thing on the final possession of the game where they didn't look like they knew exactly what they wanted to do. James Harden gets the ball. He's isoing. He takes a step back three and he completely bricks it by hitting the backboard, not even hitting the rim, hitting the backboard. And then Embiid gets the ball, tries to lay it in, and Giannis blocks out of nowhere. Now, I'm not going to blame Embiid for this because, first of all, I didn't even see Giannis coming from anywhere. I thought that ball was going in and they were going to tie the game. Plus, he didn't know how much time was left. He was trying to get it off in time. But here's the thing. The Bucks shouldn't have been in that position to begin with. And that's all because of the blown lead, the rotations, the refusal to play some of these younger guys that have a better chance of not only matching up with Giannis, but just playing better than these older guys like DeAndre Jordan and Paul Millsap that he continues to play over and over and over again. And the Sixers just can't seem to execute down the stretch. And that's going to be something that could kill the Sixers in the playoffs. When Embiid goes off the court, you can't give up leads like that. You can't give up leads, period. The rotations in the playoffs have to be tighter. They have to be better. You can't have a James Harden lineup with everyone else as a bench player. You can't do it. You have to have at least two of the guys out there at all times. And you have to be able to execute late game. But when I see all these things combined, I see one constant, and it's Doc Rivers, okay? And then if this stuff continues that we're seeing with the Sixers right now, these things could be something that potentially costs the Sixers a game or two in the playoffs, which could end up costing them a series. I'm not saying the Sixers are gonna lose and flame out in the playoffs, but I'm saying if they were to, I'd say the most likely person to blame will be Doc Rivers. This video is all over the place, guys. I appreciate you for bearing with me, but that's pretty much all I got for this one. So if you did enjoy, consider subscribing for more Sixers and Eagles videos. I do content like this consistently and drop a like down below to help push this video out to other people give me your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below what are you guys thoughts on doc rivers and his decision making yeah that's pretty much all i got for this video so thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one